let's say you you feel like you know you have it together you're eating well you're taking care of yourself and you're out out and about and you are in the grocery store and a clerk comes up to you and says something like um, ma'am can I help you and you might say no even though I'm in a wheelchair I don't need your help <laughs> okay that one doesn't work <laughs> so um, it's important to have those sentences um, <clears throat> so that you can respond So you can respond in a way that it's just, you know, conversation between you and, and the clerk. It doesn't have to be in an angry way. You don't have to interpret what the other person is saying. You can just say, no, thank you. I'm doing well. I'm looking around or, or I need something in one of the shelves two aisles over if you could give me a hand. So, you know, it's, it's that kind of just a regular conversation. Um, I know that some, some people with disabilities get very defensive about, you know, people coming to offer help. So um, that has to be regulated, <laughs> I would say. Um, you know, everybody has their personality uh, but it's important to keep, you know, the the conversations copacetic. You know, I, I don't think that for the most part people are judging us. They just want to make sure they see a person with disability. Okay, let's make sure they, they're comfortable, they have what they need, that I'm doing my job as a clerk, making sure that they are you know able to reach the different things that they need in my store in my area so so it's that kind of thing um if you have a guard that comes up to you because in some stores they do have a, a preconception about people with wheelchairs that if you are this in a wheelchair a you're probably on social security you don't have much money so hopefully you're not there with an alternative, <clears throat> alternative, you know, plan. So sometimes that can be a little sketchy if a guard comes up. Um, you know, the guard might come up and say, ma'am, uh, can, can I help you with something? And you can say, no, sir, is there something I can help you with? <laughs> sometimes I answer that way. If it's a guard, I don't appreciate, you know, security coming up to check on me, <laughs> which sometimes might happen. Um, it's, it's a little rude for that to happen because it's a preconception that I am, I am planning something, you know, so that's it just, you know, judgment on their part and feel sorry for them. <laughs> You know, I usually come back with, uh, no, I'm fine. Can I help you with something? <laughs> so <laughs> sometimes I kind of take a double take. <laughs> so, but truly, <laughs> I do that, you know, kind of joking a little bit. So they relax, you know, that I'm there just looking around. Sometimes I don't want anything. Sometimes I'm just out and about and just looking at clothes or I just went into the store just to do something different with my life. You know, people don't understand that, that people um, with disabilities, sometimes we don't get out much. And just being out there and going into a different store, seeing different people uh, is, is fun <laughs> for us. For me, it is <laughs> to go out, to go to a store um, and just, you know, take a look at the clothes, at the, you know, the different costs you know sometimes we don't get out so much that we don't even know what things cost anymore <laughs> so, so that, that's why I like to just go and go up and down the aisles and and you know it's not that I'm looking for anything particular but I'm just looking at the world <laughs> just 
getting in touch again with the world. So, um, so if a guard does come up to you, just be relaxed. <laughs> Don't get defensive because then that can cause an, uh, a trigger in the guard and they might, <laughs> they might get a little aggressive. So <clears throat> I've had that happen to me. I've had guards follow me around and then I've stopped and turned around and, and come back to them and said, sir, can I help you with something? <laughs> can I answer any questions for you? So I really keep things copacetic and, and, you know, polite. So if a guard or security does get a little rude and out of hand, then I ask for the manager to talk to them because you know, to clarify that, you know, people in wheelchairs were not a threat. <laughs> it's not like we can run off with something. Anyway, <laughs> sometimes that'll happen. So <clears throat> you just got to keep things on a polite, professional line. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, but if people out there, you know, offer to help to push you, this will happen to people in manual wheelchairs more than anything else. Okay, so um, for sometimes for manual wheelchairs, they'll they'll ask the person if if they need a push, and usually uh, when that's happened to me, I've usually said no. Um, that I'm doing fine, um, you know. So I usually say no. Sometimes it has happened to people off and on, not very often, that somebody will come from behind and start pushing that person without saying anything, without asking permission, with, with not saying anything. And so the person in the manual wheelchair gets a little irked and says, please don't push me, please let go, you know. So then it becomes it becomes a little bit of a battle and, and scary. So um, then you wanna ask for help, <laughs> start yelling for help because that, that has an alternative motive and you don't know what it is. Um, in my case, sometimes people ask if they can push me and I explain I'm in a motorized power wheelchair and that one can't be pushed <laughs> unless I <laughs> maneuver it. Sometimes people are over helpful. They want to help you as much as possible. <clears throat> and it's like, no, <laughs> thank you. I'm very independent. So um, sometimes they don't know that uh, because they've never encountered a person in a wheelchair and because uh, they don't know what to do. They want to be helpful. They understand they, they've been told to be helpful, but it's like they don't know how. So I usually tell them, no, thank you. I'm doing great. I'm very independent. So if I need help, I'll come and look for you. So it really needs to be on that respectful level. I know that some are very strong advocates and outspoken, and they will come out with <laughs> something that just throws the person against the wall verbally. And, and that's not gonna work either. So it, you, sometimes you have to be strong in what you say if someone is really bugging you. But in general, you wanna give a good impression. A lot of this in where we get stuck with people out in public is the lack of education. So sometimes we have to educate them in terms of um, what's going on, what they, what people in wheelchairs really need, uh, and and sometimes that person who offered to help you doesn't know that. Um, so a lot of this is education, education, education. Um, sometimes when I've been in a store, they've tried to move me because I'm in an aisle, I'm looking at something and they want to move me because, because they think I don't hear, I don't see, <laughs> so, <laughs> and they can't move me because my brakes are on. So 
um, I'd, I'd say, you know, sir, please wait. You know, I'm almost done. Uh, with manual wheelchair users, they have a problem that people come up and actually move them. Um, I have to recommend those who are in manual wheelchairs to put your brakes on so that, you know, they can't move you. And to respond to that, please wait, I'm almost done. So uh, that is kind of scary because they have no right to do that. <laughs> They either have to go around you, they have to wait, they have to go into the next aisle and do whatever they need to do, but not to, not to um, move you. There is no reason for them to be rude and, you know, do such a thing. Now, I've said some of this, you know, in the do's and don'ts, um, but for self-advocacy, uh, this one is, is just really self-advocacy. Um, if you're in a store and you're not quite sure, you know, in terms of when you're buying clothes, um, you know, you can always ask one of the clerks to assist you. Feel free to do that. That's what they're there for. And, um, and just kind of describe what you're looking for. I'm always looking for blouses that are a little bit longer. I'm looking for jackets that are longer in the back. Um, because, you know, I'm in a wheelchair and sometimes those things kind of crawl up and make me feel uncomfortable. So uh, hopefully JC Penny, when, <laughs> when they get their line really going, <laughs> I'll be able to find something that, that really is more comfortable. But that's what I'm saying in, in general that, um, don't, don't hesitate to ask for help. Practice asking for help. Um, for those who are blunt and strong in their voice and strong advocates, you know, tone it down. <laughs> Might not be the place. Um, and sometimes we have to speak out, you know, in other places when it has to do with housing, when it has to do with sidewalks, when it has to do with streets, you know, and we're writing to the government. Yeah, then there we have to be strong. <laughs> <laughs> and and be very direct in what we need. Um, but uh, truly, uh, we have to figure out where that tone of voice is right, you know, in one place, in the other. Certainly when someone is pushing you and you did not ask for it and they're not responding, sorry, fly, uh, that is when you really need to speak out, <laughs> yell, ask for help, scream for help. I have a whistle on my keys and uh, a very loud whistle. And also you can carry a personal alarm in which you pull it and it makes a lot of noise. Then that person will probably stop and leave. But um, those moments where you really want to step up <laughs> and make sure that you are safe. Um, and, and sometimes, you know, if you have some creepy guy, creepy gal following you, you want to go into a store and ask for help either from the management or from the security guard and say, I have somebody following me. I just came into the store for some help. So then the security guard will uh, guide you towards a safe place until they figure out who this creepy person is or call the police, you know. So, so those are just kind of tips on advocacy. And, and it'll be up to you also to bring out some of your personality and, um, you know, design some statements, some answers that will work for you and that'll get you through the situation. Uh, whether it's a positive one, whether it's a negative one, but, you know, uh, and those need to be practiced. So um, when I've had a guard, I think I had a guard come up to me when I was in, what store was it? I think Target. And so I was in the um, technology department, and I was just kind of looking around in the glass counter. I was just, just looking. 
And the, the security guard came up to me and asked me if there was anything he could help me with. <laughs> I said, no, that I was just looking, you know, at cost and things like that. So I explained to him really what I was looking for. So he said, oh, okay, ma'am. So not a problem. So he just walked away. So he just wanted to make sure I wasn't up to no good. <laughs> so I'm never up to no good. <laughs> so... Oh, my goodness, the world out there is uh, tipsy-turvy, but we always need to be ready to advocate for ourselves and to educate people. Education is, like, uh, number one on my list of things because people don't, don't, don't understand or don't get it or, you know, haven't just been in our shoes. So, you know, the counters are too high. Uh, the clerk is talking to someone else and not paying attention to us. So, you know, um, <laughs> uh, I know that I have to be very patient with the world out there. So, um, and sometimes I have to ask for help. I remember I got on the bus one day and I forgot to scan my phone. And uh, I just asked the bus driver to please scan it, you know, because I was already bolted. You know, he had already strapped me down. So he said, sure. So he took my phone and scanned it, gave it back to me. Not a big deal. <laughs> so sometimes we do goofy stuff and we need a hand. <laughs> so um, a gal once, you know, I just asked her, just, yeah, I just put all that stuff in a bag I have back there. She put it in my grocery bag and off I went. So it's those kind of things, although I don't like to put things in the back because I don't have any control over who's behind me. So I usually keep things in, in front of me, right on my lap as I'm going along. So, you know, I just look at things, you know, in a way that I'm going to feel safe and comfortable and that I am ready to, to spring into action when I need to or ask for help when I need to or let the person know that, no, I'm fine, that I don't need help. <laughs> So, <laughs> and some people stop me and say, oh, ma'am, where did you get that wheelchair? You know, I need one for XYZ person, and I just don't know the steps to how to do that. So then I'll take time to talk to them and explain to them the steps that you would take here in the United States to be able to get a power wheelchair or a manual wheelchair because it's pretty, pretty similar. So anyway, I'm hoping that these steps... After the first step of, you know, growing within yourself, that you will feel confident enough to, to say these things that I'm encouraging. And to be careful with the roughness, um, because that can throw somebody off. And, you know, we're almost like, um, you know, we're, we're representatives of the disabled community in a way. So we, we don't want people to believe that we're all angry, that we're all thieves, or that we're all, you know, <laughs> people have weird ideas out there. So we're kind of like the public relations for people in wheelchairs. So if you kind of think of it that way. So you got to be ready to uh, represent us the best way you can. There are a lot of books and magazines and pages and pages on the internet about self-advocacy. And one of those might be helpful for you. Um, I found one, and I'm just going to read their steps. <coughs> this is from a page called RAP, Wellness Recovery Action Plan. Uh, so that could fit a lot of us or, you know, certain circumstances. So as they put in here <coughs> in bold, it says, believe in yourself. <laughs> and that's what we talked about in the, in the first uh, video. But here they have some pretty good steps, you know, one through, I don't know what it is, uh, 10. So um, <coughs> their first one is believe in yourself to know your rights, <coughs> decide what you want, get the facts, just the facts, ma'am, 
five planning strategy. Uh, so there's step five is plan planning strategy. So how you're going to approach a situation. Gather support from others. Target efforts. Who is the person, persons, or organization you need to deal with? to get actions on, these, on this matter. <clears throat> Express yourself clearly, and this is really important. Some of us don't have very good speech. Uh, some of us have memory issues. I get stuck sometimes with my words. So sometimes uh, people have to um, be patient with us. Assert yourself clearly. Speak out, asking for what you need and want, and then listen. So it's important to express ourselves, but also to listen what the other person is saying to us. So that's a really important step in self-advocacy. Be firm and persistent. <laughs> that one is really important. Don't give up, you know, just because the guard says, no, you can't be close to these cabinets or whatever. No, you're right, you know. So... <clears throat> You're a patron just like everybody else. Or you need housing just like everybody else. Or you want to try cooking like everyone else. So um, so it's it, those steps are really basic and really important. So, um, and there are all kinds of lists of self-advocacy. This is just a really basic one. And I'll put the link down below so you can read it the details of each of these steps. All right, folks, uh, that is it for this video. Uh, if you'd like to help this channel, you already know, you know, do a like, subscribe, share, comment, and, uh, and sharing is, is really important uh, for this type of channel. So feel free to, uh, to uh, share your experiences with others about self-advocacy.